again with David Donk, uh, top of the corner at the Saratoga Racetrack. David, you're sending a pair tomorrow against Golden Pal. Uh, some call it a super horse. It seems like other people shied away from this race and a little bit afraid, and uh, you sent a pair in there. Can you tell us a little about it? Yeah, listen, Golden Pal is to be one to five in there. Really, really good horse of Wesley's. Um, really fun horse to watch. So he's by far the best sprinter in the country. But listen, we knew the field was probably going to come up a little short. It was the intention to try and run yes and yes in there. Um, didn't run well here at a mile in the beginning of the meet. He's probably best at one turn. That horse loves Belmont Park. But it was kind of the intention maybe to run him in here, especially looking at the PPs of the nominations. A lot of speed in the race, but the best speed is Golden Pale. So I think the other speed horses have it uh, up against him a little bit. Um, and then at the last minute, you know, Phil and I were talking and we supplemented Thin White Duke. And it's, it's a little bit of a saver, you know, just in case the weather. Um, turns or something. There is a forecast of possible thunderstorms. Uh, it's really hot on Thursday. So, you know, let's see. It could be a game time decision that he goes or doesn't go, but he came out of his race very well. And, you know, some of these grass horses, you, if they're doing well, you can't be afraid to run them. I love that you're never afraid to run a horse. You do have been red hot with these first time starters. You have one today in the second race. Um, a nice two year old New York bred Philly. Can you tell us a little about it? Yeah, listen, she's a nice filly. She's out of a really good mare for Bob Spiegel, um, the mare Steamy. She's um, a half-sister to Vision Perfect, who we had early in his career. Um, you know, she's got a lot of class. She's done well. Um, it's a bit of a crapshoot, these five and a half. It's a pretty good quality field, open company. Um, you know, but listen, at the end of the day, it's about development of these horses. If they're good enough to win, that's great, um, but they don't have to win. And... Um, I, I think she could have a future, so been looking forward just to getting her started. Last question for you. Today is going to be really hot up in Saratoga. We're talking a high of 95 degrees. What do you and your barn and your assistants do to really keep these horses cool? Well, listen, it's uh, 9.15 in the morning right now. It's really comfortable. The morning is really nice. There's a breeze right now. So it's not like you're having, you know, a continuous 24 hours of really hot weather. Obviously, it's going to get pretty hot today. Uh, you know, listen, in our barns, we got a lot of fans, um, some big fans in the shed row. Just keep the air circulation, you know, keep things cooler. There'll be a lot of cooling stations for the afternoon, you know, and listen, there's a lot of, there's a committee of people between management, the jocks, and horsemen that would meet this morning to make sure uh, whatever the heat index is, it's not really that humid right now. So, you know, I think we're okay, and it's something you can monitor as the day goes along, but it looks like we'll be okay. Well, good luck with your two-year-old today, and good luck tomorrow against Golden Pound. Thanks. Mike Luzzi, uh, we're back at the Oklahoma training track. Mike, you're the eldest statesman, I believe, of this jockey colony. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but I think Johnny's a little younger than me. I think you got two years on Johnny. Can you tell me a little about this jockey colony this year? It's It's been pretty crazy. I think we got some of the most competitive. You were in the 90s uh, when we had uh, some of the best up here. Do you th How do you compare the two? Well, I mean, if you think back, I came in 94, 95, and I rode all them years with Hall of Fame jockeys. Um, you know, I've seen the best of them, Santos, and me and Prado came at the same time, and Chris Antley, and Jerry Bailey, of course, and Mike Smith, my good friend. And then slowly the change happened, and now you see a lot of, a lot of young, talented jockeys here who, uh, you know, their, their style kind of looks like mine was in, in the 2000s and stuff like that. It's very interesting, but very good jockeys, um, very competitive. Uh, everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody's out to win, and it's it's fun to watch, but it, it reminds me of the, the same thing when, when I came around. Now I'm the older guy watching the young kids do it, and it, it's fun, but I'm still competitive like they are. I mean, uh, you're still out there riding, which is amazing, and I, I have to point on that. You, know, you broke your ankle last year. Yeah, right at a weird time in June and it was a, just a freak accident uh, behind the starting gate so I didn't get to ride here last year I was here you know I do live here uh, year round but I was here last year and it's disappointing when you're out of place and you're not riding so at least I'm riding this year I'm not riding the best horses yet but I'm still working hard 
talking about, you know, how, how have you stayed in shape all these years? What have you done to, to really stay competitive at your age? It seems like a lot, some of the jockeys drift off and some of the best keep staying. How, how do you do that? Well, I, I, I'm naturally small, but I do, I do, uh, you know, I do work out. I do get on a lot of horses. Um, you know, Mike Smith, when, when he was here, we were friendly. We had kind of a the same kind of routine. And, uh, to keep yourself fit and keep your diet correctly and all that stuff, uh, and, and I'm naturally light. I mean, I weigh 110 pounds, so I don't fight the weight. And like you said, you see some guys, as they get older, they start to get heavier, and, and then, you know, they give up the fight or the weight. So I, I'm naturally light. Well, good luck on the 2022 meet. Thank you, bud. Here with Charlie Lynch from the Brendan Walsh Racing Stables. Uh, we're back here at Barn 83 in the far corner of Saratoga's backstretch. Uh, you have a horse going this weekend in the Glen Falls. Can you tell us a little about it? Yeah, Temple City Terror. She's been training well. Came out of that last race well. She didn't really like the soft ground. It was pretty bad over there the last time. So we'll put a line through that one. She came out of it well and is doing really well at the moment. So we have uh, a, quite a race here with Warlike Goddess, who's going to be very, very short. What do you guys think about as a team when you when you enter a horse against something like that? Uh, it seems like you guys aren't afraid at all to run against the best. No, you got to run your race. Uh, the, they run the race for a reason. Anything can happen, and you just got to take your chances. In terms of the barn this year, I know uh, Brendan's coming up later this weekend, uh, but the size of the barn, are you guys bigger or smaller than you normally are up here? Um, this year we have about 20 up here. I think last year we were close to the same, but we, we like to come up here with around the same amount of horses and stuff like that. And we rotate horses in and out after they run. If we want to send them back to Kentucky and stuff like that, and then we send a couple more up here that are closer to running. In terms of two-year-olds, I know you told me that you don't have anything ready, but uh, are you guys training some up here and possibly get something later in the meet? Yeah, we have a couple two-year-olds up here. We have three of them up here, or four, and they're working well at the moment, and they'll be getting ready to run later on. Well, good luck with on Saturday, and good luck with the 2022 meet. Thank you.